All right, I'm doing a little load development for the uh, 90 grain uh, Sierra Game Changer. Uh, pretty interested in this for uh, uh, whitetail. Plus, it has a, a ballistic coefficient of uh, 0.490. Uh, so it could be, uh, you know, the bullet to kind of rule them all. This is for a 243, and I thought I would kind of share uh, this whole uh, sequence of events leading up to, to developing this load for this thing. So, uh, for starters, let me get the target here. I've already been to the bench. Here are the results, kind of from that. So, the backstory is um, this is uh, twice fired uh, Starline brass. Uh, we're using H4350. Uh, Kind of like the go-to for the 243, among others. Um, twice fired black brass, uh, CCI 200 large primers. Uh, and basically what I've done is started at a 39 grain charge and increased all the way up to 41 grains uh, in quarter grain increments. I'll put a picture of this up, but basically uh, the takeaway from this is our initial group started around uh, 1.2 inches, right, over an inch. And these, as we move uh, up in uh, charge uh, weight, basically you see the groups uh, uh, decrease. So here at 40 and a half grains, uh, we're at a 0.4 uh, inch group. And from that, right, it starts to kind of uh, spread out again which is good. That's in the right direction. So uh, these are three shot groups. Um, and what I'm looking for here is really the velocity note of the rifle. Okay. Uh, I have a few charts on that. I'll put those up. So explain those. <clears throat> All right. So this chart is uh, basically group size and uh, range or extreme spread so for this chart uh, the blue line is the group size in inches you can use the left scale for that and you can see it's trending downward uh, to uh, 40 and a half grains and then it starts to trend upward from there which is in the direction of good <clears throat> as we pressurize this arrow uh, we get uh, you know kind of smaller groups hopefully more consistent now you can also see on the red line, uh, which I call it range, is statistical. Statistically speaking, it is range. I guess everybody calls it extreme spread, but it's basically the max difference between the three shots, okay, in terms of feet per second. So I put that on here also, and you can see there's a trend in that as well. Uh, the thing that kind of sticks out here is the 40 and a half grain charge weight. Uh, the range actually increased on that one, which is a little bizarre. Um, but I mean, this is how, I guess we used to do this before we had chronographs. The chronograph makes this really easy. The next chart, right, is the velocity. Find the velocity, you know, the rifle, uh, we're looking basically for flat spots. Uh, and we're looking for low, uh, extreme spread or velocity, uh, range numbers. Okay. So. For this, I'm looking at this as if there are basically two uh, nodes or areas of you know of interest on this curve. It's got basically the, the middle six uh, groups, right? Three shot groups are, are really re pretty repeatable, right? We're ranging from 3016 all the way up to 3074. That's pretty tight uh, for going up in quarter inch, or I'm sorry, quarter grain uh, increments. There's not a lot of increase on the velocity and then of course as soon as we get to 40.75 it takes off right 40.75 grains and up we get on a steep part of the curve again so we're off the node what is interesting to me when i look at this data is the red line again is extreme spread or range of the of each three shot group uh there's a little bit of a flyer in this one again the 40 and a half uh grain uh group it actually increased in the range here 
Um, but aside from that one, it's this is the part where the range or the extreme spread is trending downward. So to be honest with you, uh, from 40 grains to 40.75 grains, I'm really interested in this section of the curve, right? I want to work in here, I think. Um, so that's what I'm going to do next. All right. So based on that, what I've done here is I've kind of loaded up uh, basically round two of this experiment. So what I want to do now is I want to work with uh, going from, uh, this is actually 39.75 all the way up to 40.75 in 0.25 grain increments again, okay? Now, these are five, four or five shot groups, okay? Uh, I just want to see what that range is going to do um, with more shots. Uh, everything else is the same. Same seating depth. We're like six thou off the lands. I just generically picked that. It's always where I kind of start. Uh, six thou off the lands. Uh, same style or same uh, history on this brass. This is, you know, second fired brass. So this will be the, uh, you know, the, the third firing of this thing. Um, and this is looking at that second note. So I'm really interested in seeing if any of this repeats, right? And if these spread numbers uh, kind of stay the same. Uh, the other side of this is I now have this third fired brass, right? So this is only getting better as I continue to fire it. Uh, I will check this to see if this needs to be bumped. But what I think I'm going to do with these guys is uh, you know, get them resized, uh, get everything trimmed to the correct lengths and I really want to play with neck tension a little bit uh, I picked up these mandrels uh, for my Lee Collet die and I'm going to do a uh, a little video on these guys to kind of explain how this works these are two thou undersized mandrels you can get from Lee Precision uh, I really like this resizing die uh, it makes my, my life a lot easier. Uh, it seems to add another level of uh, consistency to the, to the hand loads too. So I'll put a link uh, on this video for that one. Um, but I'm going to head to the range tomorrow and uh, shoot these guys. And uh, I'll let you know how I make out.